Hi, I'm Daniel Mettler from Tusic Internet Solutions, and I would like to teach you more about debugging Web API. Because when you start working with Web API, um, the technology is very, very mature. It does a lot of things for you, but since you're working on so many different layers and, and so many tiny things could go wrong, you'll probably have a lot of difficulty figuring out where to apply your fix. So in this session, I would like to show you the basics, some common mistakes, um, how to corner the problem, like finding out is it in JavaScript or is it in the uh, C Sharp code. Then I would like to teach you two or three basic tools like Fiddler and the, the, the console in your browser. Look at some breakpoints and fixing the problems. So if we look at a typical scenario, um, let me just quickly go to the browser and show you an example. If I would submit a new question here. Wonderful stuff. This is a complaint and I don't like this. And I press send. Then some JavaScript will get this information. We'll put it in a tiny request, send it to the server. The server will process all that and will send an answer typically saying, okay, I just did it. Thank you. Or something else. And then JavaScript will run again to show hide certain messages. And then that's it. So let's imagine you wouldn't get an answer. The message, everything is good, would not appear. Chances are it still worked, but maybe your final JavaScript had a mistake in it. And so figuring this stuff out is what I want to teach you now. I'm going to press send. It did a very fast uh, post here and everything. Thank you for your feedback. So this worked. But let's look at some common mistakes. The JavaScript could be collecting the wrong values. Maybe you have two contact forms and it's collecting the empty fields instead of the ones you just filled in. Maybe the JavaScript has a bug in the code like in the show hide, which has nothing to do with API, but something doesn't work and you may be trying to fix the API even though it worked. You could be calling the wrong API command. You're just sending requests into Nirvana and nothing happens. You could be using the wrong HTTP verbs. You're using a get instead of a post and the command doesn't work. On the server side, you could be using the wrong URL so the controller is not even activated. You could be using the wrong method, the wrong method overload. You can have the same method with different parameter combinations. Um, or the parameters could be named incorrectly, causing some other problems. You may think you passed the value in, but it didn't arrive. But you could also just be having a compile error and you'd have trouble figuring that out. And if you then go and fix your JavaScript code and you're just trying to, it's not fun. And then after four hours, you figure out, oh, it was a server and it was semicolon. You know the thing. Permissions issue, token validation. So let's look at that. The first important thing is to corner it to find out what layer are we actually looking at. I'm not gonna read this through here, but let's just simulate a few examples. Let us pretend we are calling the wrong controller. And this is so something in between. It, the server seems to be working, but we'll never know because it's not even called. Um, to do this, to, to apply this example, let me just quickly uh, make sure I have nothing changed in here. Um, I'm just gonna quickly refresh the page to make sure everything works before I introduce my mistake. Okay, everything still works. Now let's um, go to our review here and instead of actually, uh, this is the page with the form on it. Now instead of um, doing a feedback create, let's say feedback controller. So maybe I wrote feedback controller because that's the name of my CS file and I thought I had to do that. I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna refresh this. I'm gonna try to submit this again. Hello, hello. Okay, didn't work. An important thing to look at, at least the way uh, Too Sexy does it, Too Sexy tries to give you the correct HTTP error messages in a way that is appropriate. So like controller not found should be like an HTTP 404, like page not found. So what you see here is now had error talking to the server status 404, couldn't find the controller, feedback controller controller. Tip from us, you probably spelled the controller name wrong or forgot to remove the word controller. So this is a very nice error message and it'll help you. 
but let's just look at it, what would happen with Fiddler. Now, for all those that are not using Fiddler, you should. Um, Fiddler is an awesome tool uh, currently created by Telerik, but originally it was uh, made by a Microsoft employee to watch what's happening on your, your, your wire. So let me just resubmit that. I'm going to um, refresh this page. I'm going to clear my Fiddler here because, of course, it tracks everything. I'm going to just do another hello, hello. Send this. And let's see what happens. I sent this, and because the server returned an error message, 404, it's red. And this is what I sent. I could look at this and try to analyze this. But the important thing is that in my headers here, it says 404 not found. And there's an inner text thing, adjacent package, more or less, which says controller, feedback, controller, controller, not found in this app. So this is what happens at HTTP level. This nice message that you see here is actually created by our Too Sexy Content Controller on the client. So um, when you're saying Too Sexy for this module, do a post, well, it gets the standardized error back and it gives you some more infos. But this is how to look at the entire chain of command. Look at what happens in Fiddler. Maybe the message is so good that you already kind of can solve it. But let's try another example. Let me fix the controller here. Fix that. So now the controller should be correct. So let's just test that. Works. So let's introduce a, a, a mistake on the controller. Let's pretend that this semicolon is missing. Delete that and I'll save this. Now this is compiled in real time, so by changing something, it is now not going to work anymore. So what happens? Let me try to submit this again. Missing semicolon. Missing. Submit. Ta-da! Now we get an HTTP 500. This, the 400s mean the client sent a request to something that is, doesn't exist. The 500s mean this the, the the correct some script actually was processed but whoever processed it crashed so an error has occurred and that's it now what's important to know is you do know it arrived at a script you don't know whether it's yours or not but you do know that it arrived at a certain script and you do know that something's wrong on the server now Let's see what Fiddler tells us, what happened on the wire. This is this request. And what we see right now is we just, my JavaScript doesn't say so much. It's because error 500s could be so many things we did not build in a standard message. But Fiddler will tell you a lot. This is kind of the message you see, error semicolon expected. These are the kind of messages you also get when you're on DNN page with uh, permissions to see errors. Of course, here too, we only show the errors when you have the permissions. Now there's one thing to know, normal DNN errors get logged to the events, so you can look at them afterwards. Unfortunately, the web API stack in DNN isn't integrated so well. Um, we've uh, submitted a request for that a long time ago, but it just has not had the priority on DNN. So these errors will not get logged in your DNN events. This is the only place you can look at them for right now. So you can look at them, um, again, looking at them in JSON view. I mean, you could always go to text view, but this is might help more with an error. Or in JSON view, where you see the structure. So error 500s mean something didn't work. Now, maybe you're calling a different script which doesn't work. So let's just to be sure, I say okay, let's just give it a short test. This is the kind of a debugging. Let's quickly rename this file and let's just call it X feedback controller. Just to be sure, if I was really talking to this file, then I should now get a different message because 
the file doesn't exist anymore. I should not get a 500 anymore because the file isn't even called. Test, test, whoop, not found. So now I know I was actually talking to the right file and there really is an error in that file. Let's rename it back. And here's a neat trick, by the way. In Fiddler, uh, here's the, 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 the one that got the 404. I can actually just resubmit this request. Um, I can like pull it in here. And um, wait, I haven't done this in a while. Give me a second. Composer. I can just pull this into the Composer. And I'm now going to send the identical request again. Let's try that. And remember, I got a 404 before. And now I got a 500 again, because of course it doesn't, still doesn't have the semicolon. Let's fix that, submit the request again, and now it worked. Now successful, everything worked as expected, 200. So again, also just the ability to resend the very same request like you did last time and see what changes, what happened, very powerful thing in Fiddler. You're going to need this a lot. So let's pretend um, that the server probably is working, but something still doesn't quite do what you're expecting it to. Um, because maybe something is wrong with the show hide in here. Now, I hope a lot of you are experienced with just normal JavaScript debugging, but for those who aren't, I just want to say this again. There's a button called F12 in every browser nowadays, every modern, even the Internet Explorer has it, which contains developer tools. So press function 12 and you get all these tools, including, for example, a console. Now, if you don't know how far your code is getting, you could like always add console commands. Um, so let me show here. Um, console.log and then should work. Now, this is in the show OK and reload. So this, of course, is right before it does a reload. So I'm not going to put it in here. I'm going to put it in the send a new request here. And before it even does the show hide, I will say, OK, I have a console log in here. And I'm just going to say starting um, submit. Now, this is not exactly high tech, right? but it just helps me to see in the console that something's uh, working. And here you'll see many um, examples. If you look for console.log, you'll find many examples showing how to use this. So this is just standard JavaScript. Um, I just added the console log starting submit, and I will now um, just refresh this page here. Uh -huh. Let me get the console. Doesn't say anything yet, right? Um, I'm just going to do a submit here. Very unexciting. Test, test, submit. And we should see starting submit. So this is like a little debug print kind of a thing inside JavaScript. There's other ways I can do really cool stuff as well. So there's the ability to log to the console, which helps you narrow down the problem. And this is especially valuable because Sometimes you do something and the answer could come back within seconds later. So clicks could happen in the meantime and cause problems. With a console log, you can just log what's going on. And what I'd also like to show you here is let's assume we're on this page and I'll go into this and I can go to the JavaScript files and I can set breakpoints. Um, so I'm in this. Uh, Feedback Simple, the page that I'm currently on. And of course, I have a bunch of stuff here. It's a little compact, um, but I can set. OK, it's a bit too small on this screen, but trust me, you can set breakpoints in any browser. You can um, set watch expressions and things like that. This is all very standard for JavaScript developers, but if you come from Microsoft world, you may not be used to that. Give it a try. It's easy. You can set breakpoints. You can analyze what's in your variables, and that should help you 
really figure things out before uh, if, if you have a problem in your JavaScript. So what else was I going to show you? Um, this is uh, something from Fiddler because it's monitoring my HTTP. Again, if you have 400 errors, it's probably the bad address. If you have 500 errors, it's probably the server. And otherwise, it's probably something that you messed up in JavaScript. So we looked at that. Um, I hope it, it'll, this will help you. In future series, we're going to look at a uh, series. We're going to look at more complicated um, things with Angular JS. That'll actually make your stuff much cleaner on the client. But it needs that uh, that you learn a little bit more about Angular concepts. It's really nice once you get to use it, but maybe a bit daunting at first. So I hope that I can make it easier for you to get started. So. I hope you like it. This was Daniel Mettler, Two Sick Internet Solutions. I'd love to hear feedback from you guys because these videos take a lot of time to create, and I'd love to hear that you guys are actually watching them. Thank you for watching. Daniel Mettler, Two Sick Internet Solutions for the DNN community.